study. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, that you join and be a part of that Bible study on Tuesdays. On Thursdays at 7, 7 to 8 p.m., there's the prayer line. Amen. 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 You can also be a part of that. Amen. Amen. Upcoming events. Upcoming events. Upcoming events. Amen. There is an event 
uh, coming up on Saturday, the 27th. Amen. At from 12 to 3 p.m., our Spring Stepping Out Outreach event. Amen. Amen. If you got more questions about that, ask somebody after service. Amen. But you don't want to miss that great outreach effort on Saturday, the 27th. Amen. 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 On Friday. Amen. Before that Saturday. Amen. On the 26th, there's game night. Amen. 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 You are encouraged. You are encouraged to wear your Adidas. Amen. And be a part of that event. Amen. On the 26th. That's Friday the 26th. Our game night. Amen. 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 And then we are also going to have Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. Packages, amen, amen. If you want to ask more about care packages, amen, after service, speak to, to Pastor, amen, amen, oh, Sister Lucretia, amen, about your Mother's Day care package, amen. So, so are the, are the mothers giving out care packages to people?
blessed by it. So we thank you, God, for allowing us to come together again. God is a congregation ready to worship, ready to praise, ready, hallelujah, to lift up your name, to adore you, to exalt you, to magnify you. Lord, we come today, hallelujah, to say thank you. But Lord, we ask you now and in this portion of your service, God, that you would speak to us, decrease me, all flesh, and bring forth the word as empowered by your spirit for us to hear, for us to hold, for us to meditate on, for us, hallelujah, to share, more importantly, for us to act on and apply to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. the Lord. It's good to see you all on this morning. Amen. I don't know about you, but it has been a crazy week. I, anybody can attest, I, I, it's been a crazy week. Amen. But I'm here today because God is good. Amen. I'm here today because he's faithful. I'm here today because he doesn't leave me or forsake me. I'm here today because he loves me. I'm here today because he heard my cry. I'm here today because he knows my condition. I'm here today because he knows my heart. Come on now, somebody. I'm here today. The Lord has is on this morning. Thank God, 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 thank God. Yes. Ready to share this word? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know where this word is going, but that's all right. Amen. That's all right. Amen for somebody. I'm claiming for everybody. Amen. And it is not a word, a, a text that we have not heard recently. This is a text that Pastor Greg preached about a month ago from, and last week he started something, got my, you know, they, uh, Bishop Jake said when somebody preaches and the, or their anointing, you know, gets you excited. He has a saying, he said, it made my baby leap. Like Elizabeth talking to Mary when, when Elizabeth came in, I mean, Mary came into Elizabeth's house and she told her she was pregnant. The word of God said that John the Baptist, she was present with John the Baptist, and Mary's salutation made Elizabeth's baby leap. So Jesus being in the stomach of Mary made John the Baptist in the stomach of Elizabeth leap. And so last time this text, mess, this message, I'm sorry, not text, this message was preached, this particular text, amen, it made my baby leap. And there's nothing so exciting here in another preacher that you can just get so much from that gives you a vault of stuff that gets you going. And then last week he started something, and I don't think he knows he started something, but he started something. And I'm just going to reverse it on him because usually he says, oh, I started something, and he's going to come back with it and make it a series. Well, I'm declaring it a series. Come on now. And so I want you to go with me in your word to um, Exodus, the 33rd chapter. Amen. And, and we've already read this a couple of weeks ago, so it's nothing new. Exodus 33, I'm, I'm going to do, he focused on something very specific, and I'm going to focus on another part of it. Is that all right? 
I'm going to start at verse 18, and I'm reading from the King James Version. And the word of the Lord said, and he said, this he being Moses, please show me your glory. Then he said, being God, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim my name, then I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I am gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. But you can't see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. And so it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. If I had a thought for today, it is simply show me your glory. But in line with the theme, yes, last week, Pastor Greg preached about deep places. Today, my subtopic is hard places to tight places. Hard places to tight places. And just follow this in the name of the Lord. So here today, we're talking about one of Israel's most acclaimed sons, Moses. And in the book of Exodus, we are introduced to Moses, but in chapter 3, amen, we see Moses running from God. And then 30 chapters later, in Exodus 33, Moses is now running to God. Hallelujah. And it sounds like most of our uh, spiritual journey with God. There was a time in our life we were running away from God. Can, am I talking to anybody already? And then later on, after an encounter with him, we are now running to God. When I look at Moses' life, a lot of people like to break it down by the 40 and the 40 and the 40, but I'm going to do it a little different this morning. Moses, I'm going to sum it up like this. Moses spent one-third of his life as the prince of Egypt. Another third of his life as a shepherd in the Midian desert. And the last third of his life, which is the most commemorated in scripture, as the deliverer of the children of Israel from out of Egypt. He was chosen by God to deliver the people out of bondage uh, that they had been in for over 400 years. And so here he is, the chosen one. And don't you know that God knows, he said, many are called, but few are chosen. And I want to just make a point on this morning that although you may not feel like the one, God has chosen you too. Amen. For the same type of deliverance for those souls that are tied to you. A lot of time we get our, our deliverance and we keep it to ourselves. But God has said, I have chosen you, amen, for such a time as this. Coming from the book of Esther and know that if now is not the time, when? When is what is going on in this world today? If not now, when? Moses, a man of faith. A family man, a man of obedience who had been an eyewitness. And a, he, he, he's not an expert witness yet. He was an eyewitness. See, an eyewitness is better than an expert witness because an expert witness only testifies to his expertise. But see, an eyewitness, come on now somebody, means he saw all of this stuff happen with his own eyes and can testify to it, can speak to what he observed, 
firsthand, hallelujah, of God's miraculous power. He saw it for himself. It's not circumstantial. It's not speculative. But he saw this miraculous power for him. I don't know about you, but I get excited about that because I too am an eyewitness to God's miraculous power. Can I just tell you a few things about the things that Moses saw with his own eyes? He saw the burning bush and God talked to him from the burning bush. It wasn't just a burning bush, but a bush that wasn't consumed by fire. He had seen many a burning bushes out in the desert, but they were consumed by the fire. But here's a bush that was not consumed and and called him to come closer. Don't even just come closer. Take your shoes off. Because this is holy ground. He saw it with his own eyes. He saw the plagues in Egypt. All ten of them happen right before his eyes. He saw the parting of the Red Sea. He, he was right there at the brink and held out his hand. There wasn't an eye closer to the parting of the Red Sea than Moses' eyes. He saw the manna and he saw the quail and he, he saw the bitter water turn sweet. He saw God with his own fingers etch out the Ten Commandments on the tablet while he was up on Mount Sinai. Ah, he saw the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. He saw the healing with the snake at the end of the pole. Come on now, somebody. He saw the people wander around, hallelujah, the desert and around the mountain for 40 years. And their sandals not wear out. D.L. Moody said it like this. Moses spent 40 years thinking he was somebody. That was the Prince of Egypt. 40 years learning that he was nobody. That's when he was a shepherd. And 40 years discovering what God can do with anybody. Come on. What God can do. Do I have any anybody's in the house on today? Discovering what God can do with anybody. Oh. Hallelujah. But here now in chapter 33 in our text, we find Moses is tired. He's, he needs a fresh touch from God. You, you ever get tired and weary one? You just need a refreshing. And sometimes you need more than a refreshing. You need just to be totally reconnected. You know, I'm, I'm one of them. I don't like just a regular phone charger. I want the charger, the supercharger. I, and it ain't even about time. I just need it fast. You hear what I mean? You know, me into God for 30 minutes and all I got is an amen. Come on, now, somebody. Me in, and I'm cartwheels and I'm back flipping and I'm jumping up and down and I can't stop praising God. Pluck me in, hallelujah, with a couple of keys. I don't need a lot. I'm going to be supercharged. But here it is, Moses, and he's needing help from God. He's been ministering to these people, oh my God, and they're wearing him out. Oh, my God. I ain't going to focus on that today. But ministering to people that are wearing him out. And he recognizes that he needs God's help, even though he successfully delivered them and led them into the wilderness. He did all that God would have him to do. He, he, he delivered them, the entire nation of Israel, into the wilderness. And see, sometimes, amen, we, are, we, we act or think the same way, right? We, we do something for God, amen, and then God blesses us, amen, we did it, we completed the task, but then we're like, I got it from here. Oh, we, I'm, I don't, I'm telling the truth. We saying, we shaking our head no, but we do it. I got it from here, like, you know. You get to the corner and you can only go left, so you be like, God, I got it from here. 
since it's the only way I can go right now. Uh-huh. Yeah, but he, he himself, Moses himself, has not grown out of his dependence on God. We should no, never grow out of our dependence on God. We should always be dependent on God. The word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those other things will be added unto you. It tells us to pray without ceasing. Uh, come on now, somebody. It says, lean not towards your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. You need God. You need to be dependent on God. Hallelujah. When you wake up in the morning and you get groggy, it ain't the caffeine that you need. Oh, come on. Can I talk to somebody on this morning? It ain't the coffee that's woke you up. It's what you want after you wake up. But the person who woke you up can keep you awake. Come on now. There's a song that says, I learned to depend on Jesus. I've learned to trust in him. And this is the place where Moses was trusting God, depending on God. Now we find him seeking God's face, which was a customary act for him. Moses, he, he learned from the experience in the burning bush how to seek God's face. And in chapter 32, the chapter prior to the text we're coming from today, Moses was told to lead the people, but he wanted to know, well, who's going to help me lead these people? He had spent some time with these folks. Amen. And I mean, my God, my God, these, I said, worn them out, but that was very light compared to how Moses was feeling about these people. You know what I'm talking about. It ain't, it ain't about church. It, it's about, I'm trying to help some family and I'm trying, oh, come on, throw your hands up. Hallelujah. I'm trying to help a friend get through a prop. Throw your hands up. I'm trying to teach my kids. Throw your hands up. Oh, come on. I'm trying to tell my husband, Lord, have my, my God, my God. But he said, oh, you have talked to me and you have been there for me. Now he's saying, I need help. And why did he need help? For those of you who know the story, he needed not only help, but assurance from God. Hallelujah. You can't blame Moses for wanting help from God. He, Aaron, his brother, was supposed to be his help when, when he came in into Egypt and Aaron spoke for him and he was there for him. But as soon as they got across the, the Red Sea, hallelujah, Moses went up in the mountain to get the Ten Commandments and came down from the, uh, from the mountain and Aaron had built a little baby calf about this big and the people wanted an idol and they was dancing around the idol and shaking a tail feather to the idol and all kind of other stuff with the idol and Moses got mad and threw the tablets on the ground like what's up with you don't you know didn't you see weren't you at the banks of the Jordan how the Red Sea when God parted the water wasn't your heart pumping hard in your chest when Pharaoh and his army was coming behind us come on what is it that I saw that you didn't see you too were an eyewitness Not only Aaron and it was not, hallelujah, able to help him, but the people were uncooperative and rebellious. You know, this is that, that the, the people, that generation that, I mean, every time things got tough, they were like, you should have left us in Egypt. You know, we had manna, we had something to eat. It was, we didn't have no ketchup, we didn't have no hot sauce, we didn't for the quail. You should have left us in Egypt. Come on, we, no, come on now. And that's what we do, amen. God blesses us, but the, I mean, I've seen people literally at the restaurant that if they don't have, the, you ask for hot sauce, and I'm gonna say it's me, amen. And I say, do you have any Tabasco? They be like, oh no, we don't have Tabasco. Do you have any Frank? No, we don't have Frank. And then they give you that Cholala sauce, right? That whatever that charlala, I don't know, it comes with a wooden top. I'm like, that ain't even real hot sauce. I don't want this now. I don't want the plate. You, 
you just wrecked my meal. You didn't have to use hot sauce. But God done blessed me with the plate, the opportunity to sit at the restaurant, the opportunity to order food, money in my pocket to pay for the food. You should have left us in Egypt. And he desires God's presence is what he really desires. That's what he wants. I want you to be with me, Lord, at all times. I want you to know that before God made the promise that he'd always be with you, never leave you or forsake you, God was already omnipresent. He was already everywhere all the time. That's why he can say it. I'm not going to leave you. I've been here all the time. When you was a mess, I was there. Before you came to me and accepted me, I was there. When you were a child going through the struggle, I was there. When you didn't know how you were going to come out of your mess, I was there. Hallelujah. Down through time all the time. And so here, David even speaks to that in Psalm 139. He said, where can I go from your presence? Dude, you everywhere. I can ascend to heaven, you're there. If I go to make my, my bed in, in heaven, you're there. Or bed in hell, you're there. You're, you're everywhere, God. And God reassured Moses and told him his presence would be with him. And that, hallelujah, and he himself would go. God said, not only is my presence but I'm going to go with you personally. I don't know about you, but if you've ever been in a position where it was good to know that the Spirit with you, but God goes with you personally. Oh, come on, somebody. God goes with you personally. He, The Holy Spirit is there, but I'm talking the person, the Godhead, is with you personally. It's a different kind of walk. It's a different kind of power. It's a different kind of assurance that you have when you feel the presence of God is with you personally. You hear him different. You feel him different. You smell him different. You taste him different. It, it's, it's a different kind of experience. When he is with you personally. So in today's text in verse 18, here's Moses saying, you know what? Show me your glory. Now God said I'm going to be with you personally. Moses is like, yeah, show me your glory. I heard you, but show me your glory. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, what is he asking? I mean, we have a general understanding of what God's glory is. Amen. But he says, show me your glory. It's like he wants to see it before, come on, he has to complete the work. Uh, it, it's like, show me, like, let me see. It's not, I don't want a down payment. I kind of want to see the end of the thing before I get started with the rest of the journey. And it's, and it translated Hebrew as kabod, or kaboom, and it means Show me your greatness in how this thing goes down. Show me your honor in how you stand through this thing. Show me your majesty. Show me your splendor. Show me, come on, hallelujah, your weight in this situation. Woo, good God Almighty. Maybe you didn't hear me, but when you ask God to show me your glory, you want you him to show you how weighty he is in situation. Good God Almighty, God is heavy in any situation. And when his glory shows up, it's too much for us to bear. Oh, hallelujah. We can't handle the truth because God's glory is the truth. Can I get somebody to say amen on this morning? It came in the form of a cloud. It comes in the form of just the presence of God. It comes as weight, and it's heavy, and we can't bear up under it. It's so awesome, but all in one, it's his greatness. It's too much for us to bear. It is his majesty. It's too much for us to hold up under. Oh, it's his splendor. It makes me want to take myself down. Oh, come on, hallelujah. It's his Goodness times infinity. And 
so Moses, Moses is, he's just like, okay, it's been, Lord, I'm tired. He's spinning. He's like, I've been through one thing after another with these people. I'm tired. And so if I go, you'll go with me. And it's been hard. And from some of us, even today, to just go one thing after another. Can I get an amen? And the one thing after another. Sometimes you even get a little break. But the break ain't long enough for you to get your feet back up together. The, the break don't amount to you even getting strong enough. The bank don't let you at least save another $100 in your account. The, the break don't let you, good God Almighty, hallelujah, even get function at least a little bit normal. It's just one thing after another. We get a victory over here, and we're ready battling back over here. And while this victory gave us something, huh? it gave us more faith, huh? it gave us an increase, huh? it blessed our soul, here comes something else. Huh? And you're using what you had over there huh? to fight over here. It's been difficult, struggles that you've been facing. Hallelujah, private ones that nobody even knows about. Can I say that? Because we fighting some things that nobody even knows that you're fighting. You know, you can come out and you can be mad. You can present like, you know, I'm just tired. But no, it's the struggles and what you're going through that make you tired, that make you angry, that make you do the things that do but those are the things we don't talk about we just come to church and we say stuff i'm tired uh, but what is the root cause of your exhaustion what's weighing you down what's taking you through what you're going through come on now hallelujah and it's private it's the things we go through in the dark so much so that we can't see the light of day and you wonder, how am I going to make it? Because it's too much to bear. But Moses is asking God, you know what, God, that's where I am. But I need you to show me your glory. I need to see something different going in this time. The burning bush was, but I want something better this time. He was reaching for the promise. Verse 19 said, God said, I'll make my goodness pass before you. I, I, I don't know about you, but that was good enough for me. I, I'll just send my goodness. You know, you walking, you trying to make it, you running your race, this Christian race, and God sends goodness ahead of you. Come on now. And, and goodness prints ahead of you. And then you look up and goodness is in front of you. Be like, yeah. And we know the scripture that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. But what happens when goodness leaves mercy behind and runs around and gets in front of you? Come on now, somebody. Mercy's like, I got you. You ain't going to fall. I got you. You ain't going to pass out. I got you. Keep running. And goodness is like, I'll be back up with you. Runs around the, you, hallelujah. And goodness gets in front of you. And you running after the goodness of God. And mercy's behind you saying, I ain't going to let you fail. I ain't going to let you fall. I ain't going to let nothing happen to you. And you just running because huh? your back is covered. Huh? And you running because huh? it looks good before you. I can run a little further. I can run a little further. Hallelujah. Go, goodness. I'm right behind you. Don't worry about it, goodness. I'm coming. I might slow down, but I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Woo. Good God Almighty. And you running after goodness. Moses asked for glory, and God shows him goodness. Okay, goodness, and God's glory. When God's glory is manifested in our lives, he reveals his goodness. Understand, we come to the glory, but then God reveals his goodness first. Amen. He wants to bless us. God wants to bless us. Just tell your neighbor, God wants to bless us. Uh-huh. But if we're not experiencing his goodness, most of the time it's because we're failing to ask. Yeah. In 1 Chronicles 
man named Jabez. And Jabez cries out to the Lord, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Now, some of us have been raised to ask for help, have been raised not to ask for help from anyone because we don't want any to appear that we're begging or that we're ashamed to show you that we're in a weakened state or we're going through. You know, I don't know about all the generations in here, but in my generation, what goes on in this house, uh-huh, and you could be hungry. You could just be licking on the ketchup pot. Come on now. Come on. And, and But what goes on in the house? So basically, what we do is, we're contrary to what the word of God is telling us to do. Don't, and they've been Christian families that do it and that had raised you that way. You don't tell nobody that we don't have nothing to eat. You don't tell nobody what's going on in this house. And, and you know why? Because they wanted it to be private. Come on, I know I'm going somewhere. They wanted this to be private. Amen. But you know what God calls your private? He calls it pride. He calls your private pride. And Proverbs 16 and 17 says, God hates pride. James 4 and 6, he resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I want you to know it takes humility to ask for help. Come on, and you won't get it if you don't ask. It takes humility. Some people will sit and not have nothing, but because you ask, you have not because you ask not. People use the excuse, I don't want to be a burden. Well, if your God owns a cattle on a thousand hills, who are you burdening? Who are you burdening? Come on now. It's no, not in that time right no more, no more. We should stop being so private because to God you are prideful. When I read about Jabez, Jabez and Moses don't ask for anything in particular. People read it and say, well, glory is in particular. No, glory is God. There's a lot in glory. We, that's why I didn't even go into it too deeply. I just gave you some characteristics of glory. Because glory is too big to define. Jabez said, bless me in peace. What is that? What was he asking for? A blessing. And here Moses says, show me your glory. They leave it up to the, to entirely up to God. Come on now. And I know there's sometimes we need to be specific. Amen. But we need to just leave it entirely up to God. There's a song that, he, that says, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. Woo, come on now. I'll be satisfied. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, but many of us are, are, are very, if not too specific. We decide what the blessing will be, where the blessing is going to come from, when it should arrive, and how to receive it. Let me tell you something. I know I shared with you the testimony about my son, but I'm going to tell you, I could not be specific in my prayer when my son was locked up and he was getting ready to go to trial. I could not be specific because I said if I'm too specific and say it's more specifically, I could not say that your will be done because your will might be too much for me to take. Your will might be hurt. Your will might hurt me. It might leave me devastated. Yeah, you'll keep me. You'll have your hand on me. You'll hold me up. You'll make sure that I get through it. But it might be too much for me to take. And that's, a, that's the truth. I'm coming here telling you that's the truth. I could not pray that prayer. Hallelujah. And so when I think about it, amen, hallelujah, it's like I didn't, I was just, I said, Lord, just bless me in this situation. However you're going to, however the situation ends up, Lord, it ends up, let it. And then finally I was thinking, oh, I was dancing around the word. Lord, let your will be done is really what I was saying, even without saying it, because I didn't have anything specific to ask for. And I tell you, we dance around it. Know that God's way is always perfect. And 
you can pray, let your will be done, because it's going to be done anyway. 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 And, and we even want to know how to receive it. I tell you the truth, and I was trying to save it to the end, and I will. But God knows just what, hallelujah, we need. I want you to just say out loud, God, give me what you want me to have. Say it again. Show me your glory. Cause your goodness to pass before me. Matthew 7 and 7 said, ask and it will be given unto you. James 4 and 2, we have not because we ask not. God is eagerly awaiting for us to ask him, hallelujah, to be, and to bestow blessings on us. He's not, he ain't sitting there like, I ain't trying to give them nothing. He's saying, ask me. Ask me to bless you. Ask me to move in your life. Ask me to heal. Ask me to deliver. Ask me to work it out. Ask me to increase you. Ask me to add to you. Ask me to strengthen you. Ask me to move in your life. Ask me to help you with your children. Ask me. And he said, I'll make my goodness pass before you. I'll proclaim the name of the and I'll proclaim my own name. You don't have to proclaim me. When my goodness runs around you, don't be like, oh, thank you, Lord. He said, uh-uh, I'm going to run behind you like, I'm the Lord. He going to pass, goodness going to pass you like, from the Lord. <laughs> and keep it moving. He said, because basically, I'm gracious to who I want to be gracious to. And I'm compassionate to who I want to be compassionate to. Those things belong to me. We know in lamentation, it's because of your compassion that we are not consumed. It's his compassion. God's saying, I'll reveal my name. I'll reveal my character and my nature on whoever I want to. And God wanted Moses to understand his glory, not just his presence. And there's a difference between the presence and the glory. There's a difference between his presence and his glory. His presence can make you feel, oh, thank you, Jesus, light. His presence makes you feel loved. His presence, come on, makes you feel increased. It makes you feel invincible. His presence makes you feel confident. His presence increases your faith. His presence makes you feel like you got help. But his glory is too much to bear. Pastor Greg was sharing a story about a, a priest, amen, with me the other day, and that when the glory of the Lord would fill the temple, the priest, it was so much that the priests all had to bend down like this and operate around the altar like this because the glory of the Lord was too heavy. Can you imagine the priest with the incense and the priest that's going for the sacrifice and the priest, they're all in the temple and they're built down because the glory of the Lord is too much for them to bear. And God wants you to know there's a difference between my presence and my glory. Now Moses had, had a great relationship with God, but the face-to-face -face was not, was, wasn't going to happen. God was like, because no man can see what you live. Although prior to that, the word of God says Moses talked to God as a man face to face as a man talks to his friend. And really what was being said about that, hallelujah, is that Moses did talk to God face to face like a man talked to his friend. But Moses talked plainly to God, like direct conversation, different from the other prophets that came behind him who talked to God. God talked to them in dreams and visions. So there's a difference when he talks to you directly. Verse 21, and we're moving towards the end. And the Lord said, Here, here's a place by me. Man, I'm stuck on here. Here's a place by me. He, Moses wants to see God's glory, and God already got the place picked out. Come on now. Can you just imagine? God already got the spot picked out. Can you imagine God like, 
come on now, boy, there's a place by me. Now watch my motion. I know that I, I just, there's a place by me. Come on now. There's a, a place by me. And you shall stand on the rock. This place by me. Amen. I'm a, and so I'm turning my back to you because this is my place. Come on. Now. And we learned, hallelujah, on Resurrection Sunday, who's at the right hand? Come on. And he said, there's a place by me. And you will stand on this rock. The rock. Not a rock. The rock. It's in the word. The rock. And you will stand on the rock. I love the fact that he said, a place by me. It's already established. It was established before the foundation of the world. God had this place right by him. So when you want to see his glory, there's a place established. He's not coming down to you. Really, you're going to come up to where he is. Good God Almighty. And there's a place right by him. Mm. And that place is next to God, and it's on a rock. On a rock that's secure. The rock that's safe, the rock that heals, the rock that comforts, the rock that gives peace, the rock that delivers, the rock that gives shelter, the rock that increases, the rock that feeds, the rock that fills, the rock that quenches thirst, the rock that, oh, come on now somebody, the rock that takes care of you, the rock that comforts you, the rock that wipes away your eye, tears from your eyes, the rock that never leaves you or forsakes you, the rock, hallelujah, that'll never leave you lonely, uh, the rock that hears your prayer, uh, the rock that advocates for you, uh, the rock that's your advisor and your counselor. Uh, oh, come on now. Uh, there's a place by me, uh, and it's called the rock. The rock of my salvation. Whew. There's a place next to God. Tell your neighbor, it's on the rock. Uh-huh, it's on the rock. Uh, there's a song by Chicago Mass Choir. When every the song word says, when everything else fails, I can go to the rock. Remember that song? Hallelujah. When trouble's around me, I can go to the rock. God has promised that he would keep me if I abide in his word. No matter what the problem, I can go to the rock. My God. And then there's another song that the older saints like to sing. Amen. And on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Come on, on Christ the solid rock. We said, I'm here today to tell you that hallelujah, back in Exodus 33 for Moses, when God, he asked God, show me your glory, God said, there's a place by me, and Jesus was right there. Oh, come on now, somebody. He was right there. Yeah, there's a place next to God, and his name is The Rock. Moses, Moses was... He was in a hard place now. He's at a hard place. Come on now. We face abandonment, hardship, brokenness, being lied on, sleepless nights, life's precious woes, loss, all that kind of stuff. And we find ourselves sometimes in trouble. Moses, amen. But Psalms 27 and 5 said, For in a time of trouble he shall hide me in the secret pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Come on now. And this is David. And then those that are in need of deliverance in a situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock. Lord, save me. For thou art the rock, my rock and my fortress. Oh, and even when you're overwhelmed, can I talk to anybody that might be overwhelmed? Psalm 62 and 1, from the end of the earth. Will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed? Lead me to the rock, which is higher than I. Come on, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock, which is higher than I. Dave, David knew how to position himself for the glory of God. Oh, come on now. If you want to get there, you got to get yourself in position. Oh, you got to get on the word. Get in the word. Stand on 
Jesus. Uh, stand on his promises. Stand on his life, uh, his death, uh, his resurrection, and his ascension. Uh, you got to stand on Jesus to position yourself for the glory of God. from a rock to a hard place to a tight place. A hard, no, we got a not hard enough time dealing with the hard place. But God takes him from a hard place to a tight place. I said, Lord, have mercy. As I read this, God, God says, my glory is going to pass by. But before, uh, you, you're on the rock, but before my glory passes by, I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock. A cleft in the rock, some people say it's cave. No, it ain't no cave. It's a crack. It's a crevice. I'm going to push you down into a little small, tight place. And can you imagine, amen, hallelujah, the tight places that we undergo when we're waiting for God to come through for us, when we're waiting for the glory of God to manifest in our life, he puts us in tight places. We know him to be a God that frees, that set frees and delivers, but he's also the God that can put you in a tight place. Ah, oh, come on. A hard place to a tight place where all you can do in that he puts the squeeze on you. Ha! Ah, and all you can do in that tight place. Come on now, somebody. here. I, I know that I know that I know this because the Lord showed it to me, that tight place. Uh, see, because when you are in Christ Jesus on the rock, amen, your options are few. God told me to tell you, when you are in Christ Jesus, your options are few. Trust me on today. Your options are few. You don't get to react the way the world reacts. You don't get to say what the world says. You don't get to do what the world does. You don't get to cope like the world copes. You don't get to run away like the world run away. You don't get to fight like the world fights. When you are in Christ Jesus, your options are few. When you're in the cleft of the rock, can I tell you, hallelujah, the only thing that's left to do is have faith, trust God, hope in God, believe God, expect from God, and the thing that we don't like is wait on God. Oh, my God. I wish I could give it to you like the Lord showed me. You went from a hard place to a tight place because God's getting ready to move in your life, and he put the squeeze on you. Oh, come on, somebody. He put you down. You can't budge. All you could do is say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless your name, God. I love you, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes you can't even raise your hand. All you can do is say thank you. Sounds like a situation. You already in the place for the glory of God. Sounds like you in the place for the glory of God. Keep losing, I keep losing, I keep losing, I keep losing. God just putting you down in that cleft. He said, stay right there. Stay right there. Stop trying to figure it out for yourself. You in a tight place. You went from a hard place to a tight place. God said it's by design. For I know the plans that I have for you, plans of good and not of evil, to bring you hope and a future and an expected end. I know what I have in store for you. This is all 
because of his glory. He can show you his glory. That tight place. When the doctors have done all they can do. Tight place. When they tell you, we're going to lay you off. Tight place. When you get that letter that they're accepted to the school, but you don't have the tuition. Tight place. God say, I'm getting ready to show you my glory. When the doctor gets a diagnosis, and you're like, I don't know how much of this I can do. Tight place. God's getting ready to show you his glory. His glory is getting ready to pass by. Mm, he said, I'm going to cover you with my hand. Oh, my God. And you will see I'm going to pass by. Why are you in this tight place? See, most of the time when he blesses us with his glory, you don't even realize it until he's passed. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Only got a few because I, 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 I realize that in my life. Amen. It's not until, hallelujah, he's, he's already done it. And I arrive at the place of my blessing. He doesn't give it to me. I arrive at the place of of my blessing. Come on, I know, I see you right here. I got one person who's agreeing with me. I arrive at the place of my blessing. He takes my blessing and he sets it before me. Hallelujah. And in order for me, I got to stay in that tight place. Goodness passes by and I'm with goodness. But I got on, and right here is my blessing. But it's also where the glory of God is resting. You got to arrive at your blessing. When you are hidden in Christ, God will shower over you like a flood. And while you're in Christ, during your trials, just remember God has great intentions for us. And the one thing I love about it is most of the time I don't see it coming. I ask him to show me, but I never see it coming. Ah. Mm. Tell your neighbor, wedge yourself in. Wedge yourself in. Uh, get, wed get wedged down in here real wedge yourself in. But know that the tight place is a safe place because he's already created and knows the way out. We don't see the blessings until they pass over us. And we get to the other side of our circumstances to see the glory of God. You know when he said, I'm going to announce myself in the beginning of this text? You will know him by his blessings. I like that. You will know him by his blessings. How he moves. You will know that it was him and him alone. And when you know it's him and him alone, what do you give him? The glory. Ah, oh, come on now. Mm-hmm. This year, amen, this year when the year started, I had my own personal, as I make resolutions, I'm not a resolution person, but I had some things coming up in this year that I knew, I was like, God, okay, I've been praying, but this year is going to be the year for some stuff you're going to do for me. And I shared it with my little invite-only group. It's the year of blow my mind. Lord, blow my mind. It's just like show me your glory. It's just like, bless me indeed. But I said, Lord, blow my mind. Blow my mind. 
getting back to my son, I was praying that the public defender would do his job. I was praying, amen, that the judge would find favor in him. Never did I realize that the way God would do would get my set my son free is that the, the prosecutor would be ghetto and disrespectful to the judge and the witness get indignant with the judge. And the judge said, I guess I'm all when by the time the prosecutor was fit closing her case. in 10 seconds to say not guilty. I never prayed about the prosecutor. I never prayed about the, the, the witness. I, I, I was so focused on how he would be defended. And I'm saying, God, you are my defense. And I'm doing all this praying all. But, but I forgot that I asked the Lord to blow my mind. And so, and I was practicing. You ever like anticipate when God blesses you, how you gonna react? I, I, I do. I practice how I'm gonna praise God when He when He does works moves in my life. I pra I get up. I be like, Woo! no, I don't want to do that. What I want to do? Oh, and I'm, oh no, I want to do. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's who said that. Sounds too soprano. Thank you. Yeah, I I was practicing. I was practicing, but the enemy had me like stop practicing as if I wasn't going to get it. That's how I should have known that God was going to move the way. So when, amen, it was just myself and my husband sitting in the courtroom. And it was, we were, it was, he was called first and had to wait for 17 cases. And it was just the two of us left in the courtroom with the judge and the recorder and all of them, all of them in the judge, in, in the courtroom. And when the, when, when, a, when the judge said not guilty, in my mind in all, in 20 months, I had practiced how I was going to praise God. I practiced. I was like, I'm going to be running around like, ah, ooh. I was, I'm going to do all kinds of stuff. It was in my mind. But can I tell you what happened? The Lord's goodness went before me. And when the judge said not guilty, the Lord's glory settled on. And all I could do was sit against that back wall. Thank you. It wasn't a loud thank you. It wasn't obnoxious thank you. It barely had a whisper to it. Because the glory of God was that heavy. He was that heavy. Sometimes you don't have the cartwheel and the scream and the run. You have just enough left to say thank you. And I remember my prayer, Lord, blow my mind, because what came to my mind was I would have never imagined. Then the scripture came to me, more than he'll do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask for. Another blow your mind, my, my mind, and I'm gone, I'm out of here. School year in September began. At the time, Coop is going into first grade. From when she was born, and Pastor Harriet, you can agree with me. You can tell when a child is born that a child is going to have some challenges. Even though she hasn't done anything but open her eyes and play. When she was born, I mean fresh, when they wrapping her in the blanket and packing her to her mom, I knew. The Holy Spirit told me she was going to have challenges. I've been praying and praying. I told my daughter, you tell your kids they don't want to hear it because they don't think you know what you're talking about. Ain't nothing wrong with my child. Don't speak that over my child's life. Okay, I'm not going to speak over life. I just know what the Lord showed me. She was tested going into first grade this past September. They tested her because they, they saw some things that were concerning. They came back and they said, she's dyslexic. And they said, with the proper help, and, you know, we'll give her special attention in class. And you guys will have to work with her at home, and yada, yada, yada. We think in a couple of years, you know, by the time she gets to third grade, she should be in a good place. She might
might not be caught up with the rest of the kids. You might have to do some things in the summer. Like they had this, they, they, they had their plan, this ISP. But see, I want you to know God had an ISP. I'm praying, and then I, the Lord, I saw the Lord's goodness. So she, she's coming over. She's closed caption. She looking at like, oh, I know what that is. And before that, I said, well, what? What you reading the closed caption? She was in the closed caption. I'm saying, oh, okay. I'm watching her, and we playing games with her where she got to read. And I see goodness running before her. My prayer is running right behind goodness. We coming. We coming. We coming. We coming. And so all the years, the Hendrixes, you know, a couple of years older than her, and you know Hendrix, she's a plus plus kid, you know, always, and distinguished honors ever since kindergarten. She's getting distinguished honors. Well, just this past week, they're in assembly, report card time, and they call out distinguished honors, and they call out Cooper Bilger. All A's, no special classes. Exceed everybody. I'm talking about God will do it. He will do it. Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. And let me just say this. When I got the phone call, I was like, thank you, Jesus. I, it wasn't my glory to see, for real, for real. Because they, they had said, Cooper, when they called her name, she was like, I guess she too had been practicing for the day that they would call her name, but she didn't know what to do. And they say, Cooper, Bill, and everybody's like, get up. Get up. And she was like, I can't. I can't. And I told my daughter, I said, it's the glory of God. Too much for her to bear. She couldn't even get her little legs up out the chair. Come on now. Pray for the glory of God. Lord, show me your glory. Show me your glory. There's somebody either probably listening, I would imagine, or even in the house today, in order for you to see the glory of God, for God to show you his glory, you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm saying that because I know that to be a fact. Because first you have to be on the rock. And then you have to be in the rock. And so if you don't have a relationship with him, you can't be on or in the rock. And I just want to say, who other than Jesus, who other than Jesus to know how it's going to turn out when you go from a hard place to a tight place? He was an eyewitness. He was an expert. He knew all about it. He went from the cross, hard place, come on, to the tomb, a tight place. And he did it in Jesus' fashion, and then he became the rock. Come on now. You got to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you don't, today is the day to accept him. If you don't, Today is the day to say, Lord, hallelujah, I want to be in you. Because in you, I want to live, move, and have my being. I don't want to leave this earth without knowing you and having a relationship with you. So if you're experiencing any kind of difficulty on today, God's saying, I'll deliver you. 
And all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Son of God and that God raised him on the third day. He's the master of hard place to tight place to God's glory. He's the master and he's willing, amen, to teach you to be a recipient of God's glory. If you're here today, just bow your head, close your eyes, and say, Lord, save me. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that Jesus is your son. He died. He rose again, and now he's seated at your right hand. I believe it, and I receive it in Jesus' name that I am saved. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, show me your glory. I don't have anybody in the house today that wants to see God. Wait on the Lord. 